Last month, in a European capital, unearthed, Greenpeace UK's investigations unit is making the final preparations, wiring up with covert recording devices. On K Street, Washington DC, home of America's most powerful lobbyists, Keith McCoy, a key representative of the biggest oil company in America, is waiting for the call. The timing's vital. What may be America's greatest chance to combat the climate crisis is going through Congress right now. The video connection is set up. It's time to go to work. Hi, good to see you. How are you? Moments yeah, later, you? Mr. McCoy will become one of the first ever executives to claim that ExxonMobil has aggressively fought climate science using front organizations to maximize shareholder profit. Did we aggressively fight yeah. against um, uh, some of the science? Yeah. Uh, yes. Did we join some of these shadow groups uh, to work against uh, some of the early efforts? Yes, that's yeah. true. Uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were looking out for our investments. We mm. were looking out for our, our, in, uh, uh, our shareholders. In response, Exxon said, we've supported climate science for decades and accused Greenpeace of waging a multi-decade campaign against them and the industry. Sorry. Keith McCoy thinks he's being headhunted for a new job. In fact, of course, he's being covertly filmed. So tonight, a man boasting at a job interview or a never seen before look at how big oil tries to manipulate big power or both? First, the targets. Congressmen are fish. Exxon is the fisherman. When you have an opportunity to talk to a member of Congress, you know the the the, the you know it's it's I, I I liken it to fishing, right? You, you you know you have bait, you throw that bait out. You know it's all these opportunities that that you use that, and, and to use the fishing analogy again, just to kind of reel them in because they're a captive audience. They know they need you and I need them. Senators pressed to do Exxon's bidding behind closed doors. You want to be able to go to the chief. Yeah. And so the chief knows you, that you can go to the chief and say, look, we, we've got this issue. Yeah. Uh, we need Congressman so-and-so to be able yeah. to either introduce this bill. We need him to make a floor statement. We need him to send a letter. Yeah. You name it, we've asked yeah. for everything. So who are the fish? I'm Joe Manchin. I approve this act because I'll The biggest catch, according to Mr. Coy, it's the conservative Democrat Senator Joe Manchin, who famously shot President Obama's cap and trade climate bill. And I'll take dead aim at the cap and trade bill. Joe Manchin, I talk to his office every week. Um, he is the kingmaker, uh, and, and he's not shy about sort of staking his claim early yeah. and completely changing the debate. Legal declarations show that Senator Manchin has received tens of thousands of dollars from ExxonMobil and its trade associations. Keith McCoy names 10 other senators as crucial to ExxonMobil. Senators Mark Kelly, Chris Coons, Shelley Moore Capito, Kirsten Sinema, John Tester, Maggie Hassan, John Barrasso, Steve Daines, John Cornyn, and Marco Rubio, all bar Kelly and Hassan, have taken money from Exxon, totaling $117,000. We gave all these senators a chance to respond, none did so. Exxon insists our lobbying efforts are fully compliant with all laws and are publicly disclosed on a quarterly basis. Nonetheless, a degree of secrecy appears to be key. The last thing Exxon seems to want is open accountability facing Congress in public. We don't want it to be us to have these conversations, uh, especially yeah. in a hearing. Yeah. It's getting our associations to step in and have those conversations and answer those tough questions and be the, the, the for lack of a better term, the whipping boy yeah. for <laughs> some of these members of Congress. So he says they hide behind trade bodies to avoid public scrutiny on the Hill. Our CEO was invited to a hearing from a member of Congress who we know is just going to rip him to shreds when he goes there. 
The main thing that they're looking at is just to get Exxon Mobil in front of yeah. a, 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 a congressional hearing so they can rip us apart. Big oil, big power, big pressure. The route from the K Street lobbyist offices to Capitol Hill is very well trodden. From the street to the hill, we can now reveal the current Exxon Mobil battleground and strategy. It's big, yes. It's bold, yes. And we can get it done. Just last week, as America continues to suffer heat waves described as apocalyptic and linked to the current climate crisis, President Biden fought to get Congress to pass his $2 trillion showpiece law, linking jobs and infrastructure to massive spending to combat climate change. On Capitol Hill, though, Exxon was also fighting to strip out spending on climate. Forget that, it lobbied. Stick to roads and bridges. So that's a completely different conversation. When you start, when you start to stick to roads and bridges, and instead of a $2 trillion bill, it's an $800 billion bill, if, if you lower that threshold, you stick to highways and bridges, then a lot of the, the negative stuff starts to come out. Why would you put in a, uh, uh, something on uh, uh, emissions reductions on climate change uh, to oil refineries in a highway bill? So, and, and people say, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So, that, so you, then you get to the germanists and say, that shouldn't be in this bill. Sure enough, last week Biden's behemoth bill evaporated. A new law may be agreed, but major green initiatives are gone. Coincidence or the big oil effect? Nothing illegal, just oiling the wheels of power. Exxon said our discussions on the bill are not accurately portrayed. Our lobbying efforts are related to a tax burden that could disadvantage US businesses. Plans capture CO2. Recent academic studies show what Keith McCoy alleges is the wider Exxon strategy say one thing in public, do another in private. For example, it says publicly it supports a carbon tax. Keith McCoy says privately that's just PR. You know, nobody is going to, to propose a tax on all Americans. Um, and, 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 and the cynical side of me says, yeah, we kind of know that. Um, but it gives us a talking point that we can say, well, what is Exxon Mobil for? Well, we're for a carbon tax. And why? because they're confident it'll never happen in America. No, it's not, it's not going to, carbon tax isn't going to happen. And the bottom line is it's going to take political courage, mm. political will in order to get something done. And that doesn't exist in politics, it just doesn't. <laughs> Exxon told us for more than a decade it's supported an economy-wide price on CO2 emissions. We're working on ways to provide energy while addressing the risks of climate change. Take electric cars. It's all about doubt and delay. You're not going to be able to just switch to battery operated vehicles or wind for your electricity. And just having that conversation around yeah. why that's not possible yeah. in the next 10 years is critically important to the work that we do. But science is screaming at us that we do not have 10 years. Delay, doubt, deflect, the classic hallmarks of modern day climate crisis denial. And ExxonMobil's alleged involvement in that is thus revealed from the inside tonight, straight from the horse's mouth.